Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last parts we worked on this Viking house and we did the modeling, we imported the shield and we also worked on the UV unwrapping of the whole object. So today we're gonna look at how we can use tileable textures to give it like the first color layer and then in the next parts we're gonna look on how to um, refine it with like texture painting and for the tileable textures I, the textures I use, I wanted to give to you for free. So I created a little um, website where you can download them. I'm gonna put the link to it in the description. A friend of mine borrowed a little subdomain to me. So he can, you can download um, all the four textures that we're gonna use and all four, they come with like several different textures like normal, diffuse and roughness. So what you're gonna download here is a zip file and um, then we can use them in Blender. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna swap into the shading tab. And um, your like view should look similar like this. So you should see the texture from the shield because we imported the shield and it already had a texture. And the rest of the house should be like white because it doesn't have any materials yet. I also already imported all my textures or I already have a folder with all my textures over here. So this is for example the roof texture that we're going to use with the normal map, roughness and everything else. And I also have in here some the, the stone wall and um, the wood and the other wall part. So tileable textures can be really handy if you're creating multiple objects that you want to have, like you want to, to look really similar. So for example, if I would want to create another wrecking house and I want to use like the same kind of roof, the same kind of wooden pattern or wooden color, if you paint all of it by hand, it is most likely that it's gonna look a tiny bit different. So we can use tileable textures as the base and then we can add smaller details later on by just painting on them. So it's just generally like if you want to have multiple objects with the same look and also um, save some work, uh, tileable textures can be come in really handy. So what we're gonna do is um, for each of those um, materials that we have, we're gonna create in Blender a new material and we're gonna assign it. So for example, these, these wooden poles here are all gonna have that wooden material on them. And then um, in the next part, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of combine them into one texture by just baking them and then we can paint on it. Okay, so let's do this and we can start with the stone wall, I think. So what we're gonna do is basically for all those textures that we have, we're gonna create a new material. So we can call this one, for example, uh, stone material. It does not really matter just to keep them apart. This is not gonna be the final material that we're gonna work with. But so just for yourself that you know what you're actually handling with. And then we can take this one. Um, this is going to be the base color. And we can already connect those two together. Okay, so I do not want to have this for this one here. So I'm just gonna remove it for this one and I wanna have it here. So here I can go and select my stone material. Now that looks weird for now, but that's all right because our UV map is kind of like all over the place. But for now, we're just gonna kind of um, put this one first together and then we're gonna work on like that it doesn't look so strange over here. Okay, so what else we're gonna have? The ambient occlusion we're gonna not use in this one. So we're gonna use the, um, the height map and the normal map and also the um, roughness. Okay, so now we just have to see how we can kind of put them all in there together. So um, roughness we have here and we have here the value so we can connect those two. And you can already see like normally if you're connecting like a yellow value to a gray value, this should be like, you might have to do some changes in between. But for now, we're just gonna leave it. And then in the end, we're gonna look and, and how kind of, what we still have to change. Okay, and then we have height and the normal map. So what we can do here is you can press shift A to open up that menu and then under vector we have a normal map so this one we can use and we can connect these ones already and what we also have is shift a vector and a bump so 
this one is great. And here you can already see um, we have the height and the normal. So we can put the normal into that one and the height into this one. And then connect those two into the normal one. Okay. Okay, so in order for us to kind of see what this texture looks like, we want to fix the layout of it because right now it's like really hard to tell like what each of these values is actually doing. So we can go back into the UV editing tab. And here we can select our stylized stone base color so we can see the texture itself and we can go here over in the top, turn on the material so we can see what we're doing. And um, now you can see like this is our wall and what I want to do is basically turn it so it's it's following the general wall structure and then scale it up. And we can already see, okay, we're getting there. Um, we just have that kind of, it's like a little bit tilted problem, so we want to fix that one. So what I'm going to do is I want to um, do this in, select this bottom one and basically um, align it on the y-axis. Yes, that one is. So <laughs> what what you can see now, now like all those ones are on one level and that's like great so we don't have that um, adjustment anymore. And what we basically want to do is just repeat that for these ones too. Now this is kind of screwing up the middle part, but we can fix that. Let's just move this a little bit over and select those ones here. Um, always with Alt I'm selecting the hole and with Shift I'm adding another one. And align on the Y. And then the last ones are the top ones. And again, right click align Y. Okay. I forgot this one. Okay. And what we can do, for example, here is align X. So these are a little bit more straightened. And I want to give those ones a little bit more space. For example, with G and then another G, I can move them over X. So these are kind of, I'm, what I'm trying to do here now is like reducing the green areas that I have introduced. Let's move over here. Okay, we, we're getting there, I think. And yeah, I think those ones are okay. So let's see. We might just scale it up a little bit more. Maybe scale it on one axis also. So we're kind of getting bigger stones. And I think I want to have like in total like three stone rows on there. Like something like that is quite cool, I think. Okay, so it still looks a little bit weird because we have that really dark corners and we want to fix that. And we also have that problem here on top that, that that's kind of like really stretched. So. This is kind of like this part and we might be able to just resolve that by just pulling that one down. Yeah, I think that's already quite good. And maybe this one too. I think I prefer it like this. Yes, something like that. Okay, so let's go back into shading and let's see how we can kind of um, fix this um, part. Okay, so first things first, and if you look at this, it's like you, you real. We really have those really strong lines here. So right now the um, the normal maps and the height map is going really strong, strong 
Oh no, I, I connected those ones. I just saw it. So height map, of course, has to go into the height value and the normal map should go into the color value. Okay, so this is what we got. <laughs> um, still looks like really extreme. So um, what we're first going to do is change the color space when we're going to say it's a non-color image. Same like here. So this is going to be non-color. And um, what we can also do is play a little bit around with the strength. So you can see how that is um, changing the values. And for example, here we can also reduce that. So this is like really flat, no bumps at all. And we can bump it up a little bit. So you can just see whatever value suits you here the best. Um, now you can also see like from the roughness, that looks uh, not how we would want it. So what um, I'm going to do here is also roughness is non-color data and that already makes it look kind of like we would expect it. Um, what you can do is you can bump like a, a color ramp in here. So if you say we want to change it a little bit, you can do that. Same like here for the base color. Um, for example, if we say we can do like color hue saturation and uh, then we can like play around with it, make it more blue, for example, take off a little bit color, give it more color. Um, yeah, so you can play around with these if you want to give like a little bit different look. I think you're going to leave it for now like this and then um, later see how the whole look is going to be. Okay, so this is basically what we are going to repeat for all the other materials, okay? So we're gonna, for example, now we can do the wood part. So we can create a new material. We're gonna call that, how do we call the other one? So the wood material. And then we're gonna follow here again, the same thing. So let me see. We have here our stylized wood. So this is the base color. We can connect those two again. And then we have, uh, this one, this is going to be the height, the normal, and the roughness. Okay, and then we can connect those ones again. So here the roughness, we're going to pull into here again. We're going to say this is a non-color, and then you can fold it up here to a smaller one so it's a little bit more um, obvious on what you're doing. And then here we're also going to do non-color data and the normal is also non-color data and for example what you can do is like if you you don't want to create those nodes again we can just swap back to our stone material we can select those two so holding shift selecting two pressing ctrl c to copy them and then go into the wood material and do ctrl v to paste them in and now we can just connect those ones so the normal goes here into the normal map color the bump output goes into the normal and the height color goes into the height. Okay, and uh, we basically want this for all of it. So I can just select them and I go here and say wood material and say for like all the wooden parts. And that's why I said like tolerable textures make it so much easier for doing like the same material all over and you don't have to paint that same wooden material on all these parts. So this one is also going to be wood material and wood material. Okay. So well, for example here, I'm, I don't like it that it's so dark. So I think here the hue saturation might come in handy. So I'm going to shift a color and hue saturation. And then let's see if we can what happens so for example if you change that value a little bit up we get a little bit more uh, lighter and then we can see if we can find a nice red tone let's make it 0.5 and just bump it up a little bit with the saturation so we, we can still play around with this as like the first uh, improvement that we might make Okay, and then here we have to do the same so you can see like right now the wood is like here for the front wood that looks fine But here for the for the poles 
um, that doesn't look like the wood is going in the right graining direction. So I want to change that. Um, so we're going to go back into UV editing. And let's start. Let's go just quickly into object mode. Select this. Let's start with the door frame and tap to go into edit mode. Okay, so here we still see that stone texture. So we're going up here, I'm going to select the wood. So it's going to be stylized wood one base color. So this is this one here. And then with L, I can select one island in face selection mode. So here we can see this is already following the line. So maybe that's actually okay. Alt A, so deselect this one is going the wrong way. So L select, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then kind of do it here. It doesn't matter if they're overlapping, okay? So don't don't bother about that they have the perfect position on the UV map. That's like totally fine. I think that's actually kind of cool. Maybe this one also a little bit bigger. So I'll scale up a little bit. So it has a little bit finer details. And then this one also it looks pretty cool, I think. So we're gonna leave this one and tap and then go for these ones so into edit mode and then select this one with L. This one is already following the wood structure quite fine. I just want to make it a little bit bigger so the details kind of get smaller. Hold A to deselect L. I'm gonna rotate this also 90 degrees and then scale it up. So it's about the size of the other one. Oh, maybe a little smaller. Okay. And then I'm just going to repeat this for all the wooden parts so kind of the grain is like nicely following. Okay, so here we go. We have added the wooden parts and they look quite fine already. So that's great. And we can go back into shading, just tacking like um, so for example, the roughness, I'm not sure if I, maybe, even though I think it's fine, like, I think we're gonna leave it like that. Okay, cool. So, oh, I forgot the door. Okay, let's uh, add this one here. So the door also gets the wood material and we just need to fix that in the UV editing. Okay, here we go. Now we have all wooden parts. Yes. Okay. Um. Now let's go for let's go for the wall next. This one. So back into shading and again same procedure. So we're gonna create a new material. We're gonna call this wall material, and and we're gonna paste in all the materials. So this one is going to be the base color. I'm gonna call it like to connect those ones and we have this one as the height so we can go down here the normal map and this one should be roughness yeah. and again so roughness goes into roughness it is a non-color data can make that smaller and I'm going to copy over from the other material, the bump and the normal map again. So select both with shift, go over and then wall and control V to paste in. And height goes into height is non-color data and then the normal goes into normal and is also non-color data. Okay. So for the wall, I think we're kind of good. I might actually go down with the yellow a little bit. In the end, we're going to see maybe it's a little bit too yellow right now. So maybe we're going to go a little bit wider, but we can see that in the end. Okay, and then uh, the last one is basically the roof that we're still missing. So we're going to go here, new, we call this roof material. And again, same procedure.
Okay, so now the last two things. We still have the rope and that door handle and we want to change that a little bit. So here we don't use tileable textures because like normally I'm kind of expecting that this house is like more for like a, for example, like building a game where you, you know, you, where you build those houses. So, and um, it's like, it doesn't, it's not really detailed. So for those ones, I'm just going to use a really simple material where I don't use a texture because I don't think that in my case that anyone will really see this part. So what we're going to do is just go here and um, change the base color like to a ropey color, whatever that might be. So kind of a brown thing. Yes, and uh, I think a rope would be rather rough. So we can change this one. It's definitely not metallic. Um, yes, yeah, specular. We, we're going to leave this like that. So yeah, something like that. And we're going to do the same for here. Let's call it just black material. And I want to have like a really gray one here. Um, maybe a little more darker. And for example, this one is going to be quite metallic. So we have some reflection also going on. Uh, specular. You can you can just see and play around with it and see what kind of is the value you want. And I would say you can make it a little bit less rough. Okay, so that's it. So we're not gonna use any textures here, we're gonna just gonna use it like that. Which I think is fine. And uh, now the last part we're gonna do for this video is just kind of play around with the values. So we have the more in a color range that we like. So the wood is still a little bit too dark. So I want to work on this one and maybe also change this yellow tone, kind of mapping that to a little bit better one. And um, yeah. So let's see how we can get the wood a little bit more lighter. Um, so like if you, if you want to change the color, but you don't really know what to do, um, the first thing I would try to do is like playing around with those values like sometimes um, you can just pull them but that goes a lot of times really extreme so it's easier kind of working with the numbers so you might say we go like 5 2 goes a little bit more into the green and if we do like something lower so 4 9 goes a little bit more into the red which might be actually nice and it's like saturation is something that you can go really extreme with stylized things. So here you kind of basically cannot go too low, in my opinion. I mean, you can also do like a stylized style, which is really pale, like because the stylized doesn't have to be the bright colors. But normally, like um, the saturation, the really extreme colors is like um, really common for this. And we might add another one, which is going for bright and contrast, and make it a little bit more brighter and more just like too much I think seven okay let's see here contrast too much okay so, so that's actually fine okay and then the wall here this one maybe actually the yellow is fine like we can we can play around so we can for example also take a Let's go so with bright and color uh, contrast and then just bump up this one like a tiny bit just so it's kind of a little bit more wider and the stones okay so this is what we have for now uh, well I'm not happy with the rope yet I go a little bit different maybe a little bit more yellow Okay, so this is it for today. We have our house, we have um, all the textures around it, and um, in the next part I'm going to show you like how to bake them, and then we're going to add some more details with the texture painting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.